This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church. We are delighted to have you worshiping with us this first Sunday of February. Our ministry has curated a powerful worship service just for you on today. This month, we celebrate black history and honor the culture of our brothers and sisters we remember the legacy of those who came before us, who not only paved the way, but carried the bricks on broken backs and then built the road. We remember the songs, the stories, and the fiery hope of old men and little girls, midwives and marvelous musicians, great orators and leaders, entrepreneurs and innovators. We are kings and queens. We are descendants of royalty. We are reminded that before Denzel Washington began acting, Martin Luther King marched. And before Martin marched, Tuskegee Airmen flew. And before they flew, Mary McLeod Bethune taught. And before Bethune taught, Harriet Tubman ran, and before Tubman ran, Solomon Northrup played the violin. Recognizing that our lives, our cultures, are composed of many overlapping stories summons the Christian community to know and to tell the story. Let us pray. Gracious God, we acknowledge that you are worthy to be praised. We bless thy name because you have blessed us. We thank you because of in every situation you have not been less than God to us. You have proven yourself every time. Even when we wanted to give up, even when we're nervous or anxious, we heard you say to us, be anxious for nothing. God, our prayer is that whatever is said, whatever is done, that you are glorified because when you are glorified, we are edified. Now make me faithful to the text. Let me speak truth to power. Whatever my sisters and brothers are going through, we lift each other hands up in victory. For I declare that there is victory in your future. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Make some noise in this place. Come on. Yeah, the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. We come to bless the Lord in this place. Come on, y'all. Come on, say, magnify. Lord, at all times. Yeah. Say it again, I will. I will bless the Lord. 
for us to honor God in our giving. For those of you who would like to partner with us financially, we have made it easy for you to give electronically through Givelify at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church, Houston, or through Zelle at Boynton Chapel UMC at gmail.com. You may mail your financial gift to us at Boynton Chapel, 2812 Milby Street, Houston, Texas, 77004. And we thank you for always giving back to Boynton so that we could be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for new possibilities, new beginnings and new opportunities. We believe you, Father, faith to faith, glory to glory and strength to strength. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Let us go to the word of God. Turn with me to the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 37, verse 6. That's Genesis chapter 37, verse 6. Hear the word of the Lord. And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. Again, it reads as follows. And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. What is your dream? Have you ever shared it with anyone? What was their response? Do you have a dream? Our dreams represent the pictures we see of ourselves somewhere in the distant future. We, we dream of business success, professional achievement, family unity, peace and spiritual power. We dream of victory. We dream of history making accomplishments. 
Often our dreams become the subject of mockery when we share them with others who doubt our capacity to achieve them or lack the capacity to clearly visualize them. Dreams are the motivating forces within us that inspire us to act. Without dreams, we are like broken wings, birds living a crippled existence that lip along until they fade away. In 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech in front of over 200,000 people at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. He spoke of his personal dream. It was so broad and sweeping in its appeal that any of the millions of Negro Americans that watched him on television could easily associate themselves with the, his words and chant it with him, I have a dream. Dr. King dreamed of a world that closely resembled the kingdom of God. As the world grimaced at the hopelessness of the Vietnam conflict where a half million Americans eventually died in frustration, Dr. King dreamed of a world where the lion and the lamb will live together in peace. As the world lumped whole races into discrete categories that prejudged them by conflicting social standards. Dr. King dreamed of an America where all people and all genders would be judged by the content of their character and not by the color of their skin or even their age or sexual orientation. As the world wrestled with a growing populace of the have-nots in a nation of haves, Dr. King waged a war on poverty and dreamed of a world where compassion would flow from every heart for the least of these. As the world denied basic rights to many for a variety of foreign reasons, Dr. King spoke of a day when justice would roll down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. As the world grappled with the growing propensity for violence, assassination, and retribution, Dr. King dreamed of a nonviolent world where differences were resolved at the table of brotherhood. As the world began to question the very existence of God and the front pages of prominent magazines declared God is dead, Dr. King dreamed of a world that not only acknowledged God, but the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. But on April 4th, 1968, Dr. King was killed. The world felt the hollow, haunting chat. Come, let us see what will become of his dreams. Today, church, we are standing on the threshold that separates the present, the past, and the future. We now must ask, what has happened to his dreams? Are we closer to fulfilling those dreams or do we still have a long way to go? Church, we commemorate his dream and his legacy, but we should also rededicate the founding ideas of his dream as they touch all aspects of our lives. As Christians, we thank God for sending us larger than life prophets who bring larger than life visions of what is to be. We pray for the strength to measure up the divine expectations as we work to establish the kingdom of God on earth. We must continue to fight for not only Dr. King's dream, but for the impossible dream. For the Bible says in Luke 18 and 27, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. In the Broadway musical Man of La Mancha, a memorial song for the musical carried these lyrics, to dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go, to right the unrightable wrong, to love pure and chaste from afar, to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable stars. Those words categorize Dr. King's quest for America, but they also characterize the quest of others such as Gandhi, who said you must be in charge of how you wish the world to be. You must be the change, I'm sorry, excuse me, you wish the world to be. Henry Thoreau, who states that our truest life is when we are in dreams awake. 
As Christians, we also dream. We did not invent our dreams. Our dreams are rooted in our faith in God. We believe that God will help us to achieve our dream if we continue to put him first. No one may understand this dream I have, but with God's help, it will come to fruition. You see, church, there are many today who are dreaming of obtaining a college education, owning a business, pursuing a career or other aspirations, but their dreams are sidelined because of unforeseen circumstances, illnesses, financial misfortune, lack of opportunity, and a plethora of other situations often sidetrack the best of us but I encourage you on this morning help me Jesus to keep the face faith if God gave you the dream it might be interrupted but it will come in full circle this text focuses on a description of Joseph by his brothers as the dreamer. Joseph was the favorite son of his father, Jacob. That favorite son status often drew the envy of his brothers who were jealous of his position. Joseph's position became dangerously imperiled when he shared his dreams with them. The dreams exacerbated the problem because they depicted the brothers in a subordinate role to Joseph bowing down to him and treating him as their Lord. Joseph's brothers were bothered by his dream, not that the brothers believed that they would ever happen, but because Joseph believed them. They then threw him in a pit and reported his unfortunate surmise to his father, throwing him into what they believe as eternal silence they gripped, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. You know, church, years passed before they saw Joseph again, but in the interim, many things happened to Joseph, which seemed to threaten the dream, but actually positioned him to realize the dream to its fullest extent. Eventually, the brothers saw Joseph again. They also saw what became of his dreams. Such was the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King. It was a dream bigger than himself and encompassed the entire nation in its scope. He did not give himself that dream. Like all others in the biblical scheme of things, it came from God. Christ's dream came from God. It involves the whole world and is powered by the spirit of God. As such, the dream of transforming the world by one carpenter and a ragtag collection of unlearned men from the most non-productive region of the nation could be realized. It could be realized not because they wanted to make a name for themselves, but because what they wanted was the same as what God wanted, and he helped make it happen. Solomon Northrup, in his book, 12 Years a Slave, told of his refusal to give up on a dream of seeing his wife and children again. Despite the horrors of slavery, he was beaten, sold away, and abused, but he never stopped dreaming. Church, if we carry our dreams to full term despite our fear of failure and discovery God will bless us for the act of faith even though he frowned on the weakness that prompted our failure in the first place finally brothers and sisters we must come to the point that we remember that every believer that God given dreams are God powered dreams Joseph challenged his brothers to listen to his God given dream and they watched as God empowered the dream over the years Dr. King and countless others who had lifted their voices to tell the world about this dream I have we must hear Frederick Douglass dreaming of our eventual freedom from slavery. We must hear Booker T. Washington dreaming of the skilled and trained Negro workforce. We must hear W.E.B. Du Bois dreaming of a day when our thinking and intelligence would be self evident. We must hear Marcus Garvey dreaming of the day when we would be proud of our blackness. We must hear A. Philip Randolph dreaming of the day when the working man of color would get his fair share. 
We must hear Malcolm X dreaming of a day that we will thirst for freedom by any means necessary. We must hear Harriet Tubman dreaming of a day when journeys into slave country will no longer be needed. We must hear Shirley Chisholm dreaming of a day when our leaders will be boss, black, and unbought. We must hear Jesse Jackson dreaming of the day when we move from the outhouse to the White House. We must hear Thurgood Marshall dreaming of the day when justice will run down down like waters from the Supreme Court. We must hear Susan Rice dreaming of a day when a black woman can become an advisor to presidents. We must hear Kamala Harris dreaming of a day when a black woman can become the vice president of the United States. We must hear Amanda Gorman dreaming of a day of becoming the president of the United States only to be reciting a poem at the presidential inauguration. Every believer must remember that godly dreams are made possible by the grace of God. So people of God, I'm dreaming of a time when we strategically fight for the soul of our nation, when we fight that every person in this nation will have a fair chance for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm dreaming of a time, people of God, when we will offer ourselves to to offer our talents, to offer our resources, to fight against racism and criminal justice reform. People of God, I'm dreaming of a time when we will work together diligently and faithfully to bring good news to the poor. Church, we got work to do. Our communities hold the key to unlock the social gridlock that we have in this nation. Church, I'm dreaming of a time when there are homes for the homeless, hope for the hopeless. I'm dreaming of a time when we see greatness in every baby, hope in the heart, intelligence in every mind, a job for every worker, a safe house for every family, a good education for every child. Church, I'm dreaming of a time when there is a strong family for every child, a good wage for every worker, health care for every individual. Every believer church must never forget the dream and what it means. We must say the words of James Weldon Johnson, God of our weary years, God God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us this far along the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stay stray from the places, our God, where we met thee, lest our hearts drunk of the world, we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God and true to our native land. Church, I'm dreaming of a time when the world will change and all of us will be able to say that God has done great and mighty things and that we will know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Come what may, we will succeed. We shall rise, we shall overcome because now is the time to bring that dream into fruition. Now is the time to make that pledge to come to, into reality. Now is the time to move as God has called us to move. Let us now move from a movement a moment to a movement. Let us continue the dream that Dr. King has given to us on this day. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As always, we pray that this worship service was a blessing to you, your family, and your friends. And if you are in need of prayer, please call the church at 713-748-6066, and someone will be happy to pray with you and to pray for you. And if you would like to know more about this amazing God that we serve, you may email us at info at 
Friends, as always, we have some great and amazing opportunities and events to share with you. On February 13th, our food distribution will take place at 10 o'clock a.m. right here on our campus. And on the same day, in partnership with Church and Community Health Initiative and Bread of Life, COVID-19 community testing will take place here on our campus. It's first come, first serve, no insurance needed, a free service for all residents and we just ask that you please bring a state issued ID. Check us out on Facebook at Boynton Chapel UMC-Houston or on our website at www.boyntonchapelhouston.com for dates and times for our prayer calls and our Bible studies. And we would like to keep you abreast of the many events and opportunities that are going on here at Boynton. So please text Boynton to 31996. Again, text Boynton to 31996. And now for our benediction. Today is all we have. We will rejoice. We will be renewed and we will learn from the past. Cherish today and welcome the future because you have given us a powerful and sacred history. We will teach and learn, speak and listen and grow strong every day of every month. In Jesus name, amen. So we thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a blessed week.